Hello everyone and welcome back and today we're going to talk about the chain rule which is one of my many 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 favorite derivative techniques. Even though I love them all, you know the chain rules is very special. So let's look at this for a minute. The chain rule we're going to be speaking of if h of x is equal to g of f of x, then h prime of x, which is the derivative of h with respect to x in this case, you taking the derivative of this composite function, two functions, separate functions, which are composite of one another, f of x being inside of g of x, will equal to the derivative of the outside function, g of x, what f of x is the inside function right there, times the derivative of that same inside function right there, if you will. G prime of f of x, which is going to be times the derivative of the inside function, which is f prime of x, if you will. So equivalently now, if we write y is equal to h of x is equal to g sub u, where u is equal to f of x, look at this right here, dy over dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u, u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So let's say that again. This here equals to the derivative of y with respect to x, which equals the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, remember we said here, this is the inside function and this is the outside function. So as we go back up here again, the derivative is being taken of the outside function g of x actually, right? And the inside function f of x is gonna stand fast. But then it's gonna come out, it's gonna be differentiated. With respect to x in this case, it's gonna be what? f prime of x. So this whole thing being differentiated on the outside, right? Which is this is on the inside, you're going to times it with the f prime of x on the outside. So we're going to see some problems in just a second here. And we're going to talk about this in its entirety. And so actually, again, as we go, and let me just make one more comment about this rule right here one more time. After you differentiate, and after you actually take the derivative of, of y with respect to u and times the derivative of u with respect to x. Then you actually are actually, this is another way of looking at it, plugging the original u right back into the function. So basically we can look at it that way too, if we will. Without further ado, let's look at a problem here. Find dy over du, find du over dx and dy over dx and express dy over dx as a function of x. So find the derivative of y with respect to u, the derivative of u with respect to x, and the derivative of y with respect to x, and express the derivative of y with respect to x as a function of x. So here, y is equal to u to the 3 halves, and u is equal to 3x squared plus 1. So the derivative of y with respect to u is going to equal to, now look at this, this is basically the power rule here, and I'm just walking you through the power rule. We'll actually take this exponent and we bring this down. The exponent is being subtracted by 1. So we bring this down and we're multiplying it to the base, and at the same time, this is being what? This is being subtracted. But we have 3 halves u to one half power in this case. And so the derivative of u with respect to x is, I'll call this the constant multiple rule, is actually this is the constant. The constant is three is already there. And then from here we're using the power rule. So we're, that's gonna end up being what, a six x, right? To the first one, six x. Now remember the derivative of a constant is zero. That's why that zero is there. So that's going to equal to 6x to the first of 6x. So you see this right here. You saw that dy over du is equal to 3 halves u to the 1 half power. And then du over dx is equal to 6x. Let's apply the, the chain rule. 
And we apply the chain rule by multiplying this together. And of course, when we multiply this together and we get this simplification, this expression, what do we do? U is equal to what? 3x squared plus 1. So actually, remember what we were talking about over here? The last part where we actually take u, which is 3x to the second power plus 1, and we plug it right back into where u belongs right here in the expression. So your final answer is going to be 9x times 3x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power. And of course, anything raised to the 1 half power is the square root of. So 9 x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. Let's do another problem. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about y is equal to e to the u and u is equal to 2x to the third plus 5. And here, where we're going to be taking the uh, derivative of y with respect to u and the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, in these particular situations here, remember when we talked about it, beginning of those earlier videos, we said the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. In this particular case, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. However, looking at this, as we go on to this uh, particular function here, here this is, we use this thing called the sum rule. But within the sum rule, we're taking the derivative of each of the terms within that function. So here, we're going to be using the constant multiple rule, which is a combination of that and the power rule together. And of course, you know the derivative of a constant is zero. So with that yet said, you know, we have 6x squared as our derivative for the derivative of u with respect to it. And for this, uh, the derivative of y with respect to u is e to the u. So now we apply the chain rule chain rule here, which is, of course, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to what? x. So we multiply these two together, and as we multiply these two together, remember, what is u equal to originally? 2x to the third plus 5, and we actually plug that into this product here, and then we come up with the solution. and dy over dx. So this is the solution to this problem. Let's go to c. y is equal to the natural log of u, and u is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 2. So remember, we said the natural log of x, so, uh, the derivative of the natural log of x is going to be 1 over x. In this particular case, derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over what? u. That is the derivative of y with respect to u in this case. And as we go over here, of course, we're going to use the sum, the sum rule. And, you know, we're going to take the derivative of each term. So this is a power rule, power rule. Okay, the derivative of a constant is going to be 0. So in this case, you're going to have for the derivative of u with respect to x is going to equal to 2x minus 4. Now, as we apply the chain rule, you know, as we apply the chain rule, we're going to multiply these two uh, functions together. And here, when we multiply them two together, here's what we have. We have this expression. Actually, this is 2x minus 4 over u. But when we plug in the original what? Function of u into this, into the, into this solution, we have x squared minus 4x plus 2 in the denominator. So your final answer for this particular problem is 2x minus 4 divided by x squared minus 4x plus 2. This is your answer to this problem. This was the chain rule. In the next video, we're going to talk about the general power rule. See you in a few.